Hello Root students, hope that everyone is well. Today we are going to cover an activity from the activity sheet that I sent to your house. We are also going to talk about Vincent Van Gogh and his artwork. We will focus on I can create a flower artwork. Draw your own flowers and add color to the whole page. Before we make our art, let's talk about Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh was an artist who was born in 1853 in the Netherlands and died in 1890 in France. Um, it is believed that he suffered from bipolar disorder and lead poisoning, which ultimately led to his death at the age of 37. His style was post-impressionism, which used vivid colors, thick use of paint, and distorted and expressive forms. He painted The Starry Night, which is one of his most famous paintings, in 1889, just one year before his death. Although he lived for a short amount of time, he was able to create over 2,000 artworks. Let's discuss one of his most famous artworks, Starry Night. Take a moment and just look at the artwork. Now think about what is going on in this picture. I asked my son, and this is what he had to say. The wind is blowing and the moon looks like the sun. And that tree looks, and that little tree right there, looks, looks like it's, it had been growing for a long time. Now think why. What makes you say this? This is what my son said. The wind... The wind looks like little, little, little lines just making wind, and the, and and the moon, and the sun looks like the moon because it's so bright. So for this next part, we're going to compare and contrast two different artworks by Vincent Van Gogh. And to do that, we're going to make a Venn diagram. Now, a Venn diagram, which we've done in class a couple of times, consists of using two circles. Okay, we're going to take two circles, we're going to overlap them. They don't have to be perfect. Like this. Got um, our side um, the circles, and I have the middle part right here. Okay, now you don't have any extra paper at home, you can just use other stuff that you can find. Like this is just an old uh, part of you know, mail. I can make two circles, make my Venn diagram on here, okay? I can even use like um, old cards, okay? So I can use that, I can just make my circles like this, okay? And yeah, they don't have to be perfect, just circles. Okay. So again, we're gonna compare and contrast. So I'm making my Venn diagram. So if you have extra copy paper around, use that or any kind of other paper that you have. In my two circles again they are not even and that is okay um, what you're going to do is draw or write an a right here above the left circle and then you're going to draw a b write a b above the right circle okay so when we compare and contrast you're going to have um, differences on the outside of the circles so picture a how is it different and picture b how it is different and in the middle is how they are the same okay um, you can use um, small phrases or one word answers for your responses. Now let's begin. Look at the two pictures. Let's think about how they are the same. So thinking about that middle part of your Venn diagram where the circles overlap, think about how these pictures are the same. Perhaps you could write down they are both flowers. The flowers are both sitting on a vase and the vases are sitting on a table. Let's think about how these pictures are different now. Let's start with picture A. 
and your responses will go in the circle A on the outside part that is not overlapping circle B. So picture A has a lot of orange and the artist used sunflowers. And if you look real close, the vase has the artist's name as well. Let's look at picture B. Your responses will go on the outside circle of B that does not overlap with circle A. But picture B, well, it has lots of blue and the artist used irises and the vase has a handle. So in the end, this is what your Venn diagram should look like. There's column A or circle A, um, you know, lots of orange, sunflowers, and the vase has the artist's name. And circle B, that picture has lots of blue, the artist used irises, and the vase has a handle. And in the middle, probably the same, well, both pictures have flowers, both pictures have a vase, and both pictures have the vase sitting on a table. Thank you for completing the writing part of this assignment. Now let's move on to creating our artwork. So here's one I've already made. Okay, I made it prior to starting here. So I made my vase and my flowers and a background that's very um, impressionist like Vincent Van Gogh. And I used all the supplies that um, I gave to you um, when we dropped off supplies um, during the parades. So you're gonna gather all your supplies. So this is just copy paper. Um, if you have watercolor paper, that's great. The copy paper works just fine. Um, as long as you don't use too much water, and I'll talk about that. You need to gather your um, color pencils, okay? And your watercolor set, okay? Uh, additional things you'll need that I did not give to you would be a water cup. So a cup with some water in it. Um, this is just a little sauce dish. Don't fill it up too high with water because a little bit goes a long way. And a paper towel, all right? So why don't you go ahead and gather all those things and meet me back here uh, to begin. Okay, so just like art class, I always want you to draw everything in pencil first. Um, you know, that's never gonna go away. Always draw in pencil first. If you don't have a pencil, then, uh, you know, you could use your black color pencil out of this box, okay? But preferably something that you can erase so you have, um, make a mistake, you can erase it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to draw my vase. Now you can draw however you see fit because it's your artwork, okay? I'm going to go a little bit different than what I did with my example, okay? But I'm going to just draw a vase. Okay, so I've got my little curves. I don't like symmetrical things as much, so <laughs> there's my base. I'm gonna add a little bit of a back, like a lip to give it more of that 3D look, okay? And I'm gonna place it, so I'm gonna ground my base by adding a line here and here that makes, gives it a table it's sitting on, so it's not just like a floating base, it's actually grounded in its, um, placement here okay now I'm going to start adding my flowers okay now again draw lightly so you can erase and for your flowers don't worry so much that they have to be perfect or it has to look like the perfect sunflower I just kind of drew things that I liked and I'm not sure I look like any flowers in real life but you know I think they're pretty and that's what I went with so I'm gonna draw maybe one flower here and you could just draw a line, but let's make it a nice thick line. So I'm gonna make it a nice solid line. So I'm gonna give it two lines to give it a nice solid um, stem here. So it feels whole. And then I'm gonna draw a made up flower. So I'm gonna draw a little, kind of going off the paper a little bit. Okay. Okay, there's my fun flower. All right, and then you can add some stem or like a, a leaf to it. Okay, and you'll notice that I went and I erased this little part right here because if it's a nice solid flower, you're not going to see the base behind it. So I just erased that little part. Okay, uh, and then you can keep going and add some more flowers. Okay. Okay, 
so now that I've got my drawing kind of done, I um, added more flowers and leaves and things like that and some uh, big leaves and then some leaves to the actual stems of the flowers. I'm going to take my color pencils and I'm going to start to color. Okay, get all my color pencils out. Whoops! Drop them everywhere. Okay. Uh, you probably don't need white, but you can use it if you want to. Uh, let's see, so when you color in, don't spend so much time coloring in every bit of the flowers and vase because we're going to go back with some watercolors on top of it too. So um, don't press so hard, you know, uh, don't act like you're trying to murder the pencil or the paper. Color a little bit lighter, okay? Um, so let's see, I'm going to start with, it's so hard to choose which one to start with. Okay, so I'm going to start with this little guy, I'm make him orange. So I'm going to, oops, there we go. I press so hard like this means. It's a little lighter. Go over my color, um, my pencil with the color pencil. And I'm going to kind of just add a little bit of some lines. I'm not going to color this part because I'm going to go back with um, watercolor and fill this in. So it add a nice um, expressive touch to the flower itself. Okay. So let's see, I'm gonna pick another one to go back into. Let's see, let's do this one. I'm going to color this red. I am outlining my pencil because I really don't want that to show up. So I am gonna outline it with the color pencil. Just want all this nice color. Now with this one, I'm going to add some fun lines. Okay. Um, again, I'm not going to fill in all of this with color pencil because I'm going to go back in with the watercolor. Okay. So go ahead. And continue to add color. Um, do not color the background. So the background is all the space between the flowers and things like that. So you're just going to color the flowers and the leaves and the vase and the table, but you're not going to color the background space like this. Okay? Hold off on that part. on coloring when you're coloring the vase if you try to go with like um, the width of the vase like this it's gonna help create that rounded look like it's an actual like form like a 3d form on our paper okay if you go up and down like this then it's just gonna look kind of flat and we're just gonna try to help it out by curving our line a little bit to give it that rounded look. So now we have added color with our color pencil. We're gonna go back into our drawing um, with our watercolors, okay? Now, these watercolors can do a whole lot of good stuff. You just have to work with them, okay? So you wanna get your water cup and you wanna get your paper towel, okay? Now, like I said, a little bit of water goes a long way, so don't get too carried away with it. I'm going to dip it in the water, and I'm going to get started with the first set of colors. Now, again, this is just copy paper, so I don't want to use a lot of water because it's just going to start to tear my paper. And um, I don't want that to happen, okay? So sometimes I can, like, twist my little bristles together and then, like, blot it on the paper towel to get some of that extra water off. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to dip my brush in the water and I'm going to rub it on the orange. Because remember, what do watercolors need to work? They need water. Okay. So I'm going to rub it on the orange there and I'm going to start kind of painting with it on my paper. What's kind of cool is that the water kind of blends some of that color pencil too. But then you get some of that dark line of the color pencil showing through and you have that lightness of the watercolor. I think it just creates a nice um, look, a nice expressive look. Okay. 
and then I can rinse my brush off and you know, blot it and then I can move on. Um, you can add some fun colors like I'm going to kind of stripe this up here so I'm going to get some yellow and I'm going to put it in on just this little part but if it kind of bleeds over it's okay again just adds adds to that like quality that impressionism and that expressive quality that I want to see anyway. time to work on the background. So you're going to see like some of this part is wet right here, like mine's a little wet. So you want to let it dry a little more before you start, you could. Um, but if you don't want to, it's okay. Just make sure you pay attention. You don't like color too hard and rip your paper on the wet spots. So just pay attention and um, be aware of that. So I want to create a very expressive background um, with my colors. I'm going to do blue and purple for like I did put this one. I think they use a lot of warm colors for the flowers so I'm going to use blue and purple to kind of have that cool color background. So I'm not just going to sit and just color like this and color the whole thing. Again I want to see my lines and have it look very expressive. So I'm going to um, kind of make these fun little swirls like this. Kind of like Vincent Van Gogh and his um, Starry Night. The swirly lines that you saw. Do just this section here, and then I get my blue and kind of go in between. I'm gonna fill in some of these areas between the purple lines on top of the purple. This means it's always saying, "Don't scribble, don't scribble, don't scribble." But you get to scribble right now, so that's kind of nice. Congratulations, you've completed um, an artwork from your activity sheet. I can create a flower artwork. Um, we have nice expressive qualities, we've used um, supplies that were given, and hopefully you enjoy your artwork. So when it's all dry, again, wait till it's super dry before you do this, but I would get a um, maybe whatever color pencil you want, and then make sure you sign your name at the very bottom, or you can be like Vincent Van Gogh and sign your name on the flower base itself. Uh, but again, make sure it's dry so you don't tear your paper. And if you have a chance, please take a picture and email it to me um, so I can take a look and see all the cool things that you're making.